Hey everybody, welcome back to Pixel Junkies. This is the Pixel Junkies podcast, episode 119. I'm one of your hosts, Rory DC. I'm Hello. Adam. And I'm Aaron. Haven't done that in a while. What? The intro things. Oh. We say our names. Oh, well, I don't know. You can always put like a flashy, like, like this is Adam. <laughs> uh, just being if, like flashy graphics. If you edit them, you can do that. If you <laughs> okay. I'm so, saying you could do that. I'm not saying you should. So I what think are Rory you? talked about doing that at like the very beginning, and I was like, "Fuck that!" <laughs> <laughs> I, I I dabbled with doing name plates or whatever, but it just seemed like it's kind of stupid. Anyway, the uh, yeah, you're right. That was yeah in the very early days of the of what the does podcast. He run like an asshole? So Aaron, what are you playing right now? I'm playing rhyme. Is is he rhyming because he's got a a, a a stinker in his pants? Boom! <laughs> is that a descriptor for smell? What? Or like, what is it? What do you mean, rhyme? I don't know. All right. Uh, anyway, yeah, this is like a puzzle platformer. Uh, We're back, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that I've been looking forward to for a long time. We were going to talk about it a while ago because it came out a little while ago. But vacations and E3 and all that stuff. So now we're playing it. Now we're talking about it. Uh, I finished it. Uh, a while back as well, and it's a it's a fun game, five six hour experience, kind of a puzzle puzzle narrative. It's got some kind of cool, maybe scratch your head puzzles. Not none of them are too like overly frustrating or whatever, but kind of keeps the pace going. And uh, I kind of like the narrative as well. Aaron, I Can't found really... the puzzles in COD frustrating. Yeah. So is this is this game right for me? Uh, absolutely. Okay. Perfect. It's on that same. Uh, Cracked in, got to have a backwards hat, drinking Mountain Dew, uh, smoking weed. Cracked Level of difficulty. Because all that is inv- indicative of, of a serious drug hard. Yeah, that's how you know you're a Call of Duty player, if you live in a cracked den. <laughs> oh, okay. That makes sense. Yeah. Uh, it's still, it was a little bit optimized, or op- unoptimized when I played it. It still seems to be a, bit, a little bit unoptimized. Um, what do you look like the world's shittiest Spartan? Uh, well, because they wanted the main character to look like you, Adam. (laughs) Alright. It's a fun game. I can't really talk about it without spoiling the the crap out of it. (laughs) Oh, it's a good thing we're playing it then. It's a good game. Take our word for it, though. Well, (laughs) I mean, we're not going to finish, we're not going to finish the experience. (laughs) I just, it's a fun experience, it's a fun, it's a fun game. This walk cycle is so weird. I've seen people jog like that at the gym. I'm like, how do you not throw your knees out? Well, I mean, I can just hop around like this. <gasps> There's an animal. What kind of animal is that? I don't it's know. a human, Adam. It's a human. Oh, yeah. One of them. <laughs> Sorry. He was, he was angled the other way when I registered. No, because... man. It's a human. <laughs> Come back here, human. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Let's not forget Roy for the longest time thought that it was a pig and bacon. were t- Pig and ham no, were two I thought, different animals. I, I thought ham was an animal. <laughs> Because okay, in my defense, when people said they were gonna have ham, they only just they only ever called it ham. You know what I'm saying? Like people are like, oh, I'm gonna have ha- a ham. They would say, oh, yeah, but ham. they say That's that the- for everything. They don't. They don't. No, go, no like- one says I'm gonna have a bacon or I'm gonna have. Yeah, but they say bacon. A beef. They're gonna say pig. Ba- oh man, I'm gonna no, have pig bacon. But people say we're gonna have a ham. They don't Do they? say a bacon or a beef. When they has say, anybody ever said I'm going to We're going to have, have a ham, ham for dinner. Okay. I could, that's just totally a sentence people, at least in where we live. Yeah, but what about like say. a roast? What? We're going to have a roast. Was that's that a good also point, too. another animal? That's a good point. And I never thought roast was another animal. But I always thought ham. I thought it was like a bird creature, kind of like a turkey. Um, I don't know. It obviously Holy isn't. shit. <laughs> the size of that fucking peach. Well, James and a giant peach. Oh, man. <laughs> Somebody gets uh man, who did the who's the guy that did the score for that? Um, Randy Newman. Somebody get Randy Newman in here. I love Randy Newman. He he did a- take the dying bitch. He gave it to a boar. He got a dog to puzzles. The game's called rhyme. If you can believe it, we actually aren't stalling. We do have a topic. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We're not just waiting for something to happen. The uh, we uh, the so last week we did our E three show. We're fucking so loud. And we didn't. Yeah, I know. But as long as Aaron can turn me down later, uh, the uh, is it blown out? No, no, it's okay. not. Like as it's like it's, not blown out. it's mostly light blue. Um, like you know, Audacity has that thing with the light. Yeah, well, as long the as it's blue. not blown out, I can save it. The uh, so last week we did our E3 show. Oh yeah, I'm supposed to get. But we thing. didn't get around 
to because the camera only had two hour battery life we didn't get around to talking about uh where you're breaking the illusion here <laughs> yeah to, to, to talk about uh nintendo's e3 conference um so and we also said, i didn't want to have to edit a three-hour podcast yeah really though uh we also didn't talk about devolver digital so let's say it was awesome and yeah the best of the bunch yeah if you haven't seen it absolutely check yeah. it out it is it is brilliant a genuinely brilliant um satire and parody yeah of and of also the a pretty good E3 conference points. and yeah well they showcased two games uh they showcased um i forget uh Oh, Serious Sam it. is the... Serious Sam, and the other one, they got a new IP. I forget what it's called. I'll look it up. I can't. Phone's not me. The, uh, uh, look. Uh, but yeah, it was cool. Uh, but yeah, so Nintendo. So what did you guys think of the Nintendo press conference? I didn't watch it. I was at work, but I did watch it afterwards, so I didn't watch it live. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought... Well, one, I thought the conference itself was good. It was more in lines of with so- what Sony and, to a lesser extent... Microsoft did less corporate bullshit and more focusing on the games. Mm-hmm. Um, because remember how, like, last year Nintendo, or was it the year before, when they had the, like, fucking Fox Muppets or whatever? Yeah, yeah I think it was the year before. And, yeah. and then the year before that, they had Robot Chicken. Except it wasn't yeah. Robot Chicken because they couldn't swear or anything, so it wasn't funny at all. Um, so because they, they ruined that opportunity. Um, so, um, yeah, they had... Um, why they, they couldn't swear is anyone's guess. It's well, it's, it's it's Nintendo. Yeah. Oh no, gonna... I I know. I just think it's a yes. No, I agree. Weird. With you. <laughs> yeah. So um, they they announced some interesting games. I suppose I'll talk about my favorite first. Any of you guys check out Mario Odyssey? I thought it looked really good. Yeah. Uh yeah, like I like I've said in a couple of our other discussion threads, it just it feels like. It feels like a studio unrelated to Nintendo is making a platforming game, and then Nintendo was like, "Give me that," and they put Mario in it. What do you mean? Well, it's just everything, like all the world design, seems completely unrelated to Mario. Yeah, I'll give you that. The one. The character design and the world design—it seems like it's too big for Mario, or it's, it seems like a different art style. Oh, I don't know if it's going to be too big because I mean, there were parts of Mario sixty four where the maps were pretty big. It's 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 how spacious it's just, they are. Yeah, it's just like a, a scale wise, like even just him like walking down the streets of New York or whatever it is uh, it's called, yeah, New get, Donk or whatever the fuck is called. Yeah, it is New Donk, New Donk City, really. Um, New Dank City. Anyway, so this is from the the like I, I will admit that that it's like Sonic twenty uh, oh, man, like it's Ruby or twenty 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 six, uh, whatever that game was. What was the name of that game? Was it Mario twenty six? Oh, when I had all like the human characters and then the Sonic characters and the two did not gel at all. Yeah, it looks awful. I'll, I'll give you that one because that's absolutely true. Um, that it does look very jarring. The gameplay itself looks really fun. I like the idea of the hat. You can, like, take over different creatures and use them. Is that, that like... just Kirby, though? No. There's a big debate on. Kirby, when Kirby takes over creatures, he doesn't leave a mustache. Oh, there you go. Copyright, And whatever. Kirby sucks them in and gains their powers. Mario is possessing them. He's going into them and taking their powers. Yeah, but in Crystal Shard, Kirby takes their power. I just said that he takes their power, but he sucks them in. Mario is possessing them. Kirby is consuming them. I failed to see the real difference. It's actually... The implications of this game are actually quite alarming, because at one point in the game, Mario takes over the mind of, like, just a random dude on the street. That's rape. There's no fun for, like, Goombas or, what, like, Bullet Bills that are, like, just monsters. That's rape. is like, a dude with, like, a job and fam and all of a sudden, like, it's a me! It's like... So fucked. Like, yeah, I love the idea of this, like, of, of Mario taking over this dude's mind, and he's just like, wah, 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 like, starts bleeding out the nose, and when he comes, he's, like, never the same, so when Mario leaves, he's just like, I got to find Princess Peach, and it's like, Don, we've been over this, there's no Princess Peach, I gotta find Princess Peach, Her, she's in another castle, um... But yeah, that the, the whole hat mechanic looks cool. How so, you... uh, can I ask a question? Yes. This, this might be dumb. Uh, so... Mario takes over the mind of, like, a dude on the street. Yep. Those are our streets. Do we live in the same world as Mario? I don't know. <laughs> like... <laughs> well, Rory, you have to ask yourself, is there a new Donk City in real life? I guess not. Well, there you go. So yes. it's like a Star Wars thing. It's like a long time ago in a yeah. galaxy. Yeah. This is actually a prequel. <laughs> like, it's more like an MCU thing. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. 
Uh, but the, the game genuinely looks fun. I agree. Oh, fuck. Oh, you're dead. Um, well, that's the end of this podcast. Yes. Yeah. Um, I like the, 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 the possession mechanic Look, works well. The hat looks great. The fucking... I love those... <laughs> the possession mechanic in Mario. Yeah. <laughs> um, the uh, the the trailer itself was awesome. I love the song, like that kind of upbeat, like almost like Frank Sinatra style, yeah, like jazz song that worked really well with the trailer. It just looks fun. That was probably the best of the Nintendo games that they showed. Although the other big announcement that got a lot of, of praise was um, Metroid Prime, and that was when I when I logged on to uh, IGN that day. I, uh, that was the first thing I saw was Metroid Prime has been out. So I was like, I can't wait to see this in the press conference. And it was like, and we're working on a new Metroid Prime game, Metroid Prime Form. Like, it's like, well, can we see it? No, we literally just started working on it. Like, we told the guys in the office to get started <laughs> on it, like, like this morning. Um, so it's, we don't have There's anything. the logo on a napkin. Yeah, essentially, <laughs> that's what it was. And they're like, but they did announce a new, um, uh, Metroid Prime Fusion. No, Metroid is it Metroid Prime uh, Samus Returns sorry it's coming to the 3DS yeah so what is what's the like I heard people were talking about like Metroid Prime's not a Samus game or something what do you mean I don't know because it absolutely Metroid Prime is absolutely a Metroid game very widely uh, beloved for, uh, uh, entries in the franchise yeah but it's like it's you play as somebody else not Samus or something like no, that no that's Metroid Prime Federation Force oh which is you play as like that'd be like having a game um, uh, it's like having a game, a GTA game, where you play as a cop, and you just die all the time, like a not interesting character, or like if you played a Star Wars game and played as like a generic stormtrooper with no personality, like that's all that game was. It was terrible. You mean Battlefront Two? <laughs> uh, but you know, so the it's um. Sam, that's the new 3DS game that's coming. Uh, it's a new Metroid game. Looks like all the other ones looks great. Love Metroid. Uh, and one of the... Uh, I think a couple of the old classic games are, are being uh, remade for 3DS. I, I know... I think Fusions... Are, and, I, and I think um, Metroid 2 is, is coming to 3DS. Um, those are the... So those are the Metroid games. And then everything else just seemed very standard for Nintendo. Does it like seem like Nintendo's method of let's have a different cartridge kind for every single console we make. Yeah. Doesn't that seem kind of like to circumvent the fucking like, let's just re-release the game a million times on every console. Yep. Well, like, do what Xbox is or Microsoft is doing and just have your games come out on the thing. Um. Backwards compatible, man. Yeah, they can't make money that way, though. Well, Phil Spencer don't care. Mm. Um. How do I do this? Like, there's a new Yoshi's game. Yoshi's, Looks like a big piece of shit. It does. It's the most boring trailer I've ever seen in my fucking life. Oh, man, it's I said, Tails. Oh, I said when we watched it, it looks like a Cineplex ad. Yeah. It but really does. Also, like, the trailer itself was awful because it's all it was was just Yoshi walking with mildly inconveniencing obstacles. It's not even hard. They were just like, oh, jump up here and grab these coins. That's not, yeah, it's not even like it's it's like and why when Adam says obstacles, like you think, oh, like he has to like do things. No, like it's, this set of stairs would be considered yeah, an obstacle. In the same way that real walking has obstacles. Yeah. Like when I was walking up here, I had to make sure not to walk into the side of Aaron's house. Yeah. The, or like, like when I when I walked. Wasn't up that the stairs, difficult, though, Rory? <laughs> yeah. And the whole trailer is like the way it's uh, it's it's it, the soundtrack is recorder. It's recorder music, and it's awful. Like, it's like yeah, like, like if you've ever seen, if, you, if you've ever seen, the, I like how your impression of a recorder isn't of the recorder; it's of someone playing the recorder. Yeah, <laughs> if you've ever seen like? the the twentieth century Fox played with a recorder, yeah, it's, it's brilliant. Yeah. It's yeah. that. Yeah, <laughs> that's exactly what it is. Um, yeah, so that game looks pretty boring. There's a new Kirby's game. Looks like all the other Kirby games. You Kirby's. Know, like a, well, whatever. Uh, it's basically just you know. Kirby and four friends, you know, in the Mario, the new Mario, you know, 3DS Super Mario games or whatever they were, uh, bop around this world and they have to compete to get coins and, you know, all that kind of stuff. It looks like the most other Kirby games, which I've never really been into. And uh, Splatoon 2 got announced, uh, which, I mean, Splatoon 1, I played it a couple, you know, I only played it like twice. It was pretty fun. I don't know if it's console buying worthy because it was just like, oh, this is 
this is what it is. Like, I play it at a party. It's just not the kind of game I play over and over and over again. Um, but that's... Um, yeah, that's that's getting a sequel. And then there was a couple of other minor announcements. Actually, kind of a shorter press conference for them this year. Yeah, I never know if I'm watching the press conference or not with Nintendo. Yeah. Yeah, sometimes done, they have yeah. a press conference. Sometimes they just release a YouTube video, yeah. or like a also, direct. Also, like, sometimes like it? I just decide not to watch it. I'm like, I'm gonna watch this, and the day comes, I'm yeah. like, Nah, man, I'm gonna do literally anything else. The uh, <laughs> like sometimes it's just like I'm in the mood, and sometimes I'm not in the mood. The uh, I will say, um, the probably the biggest thing to come out of Nintendo was that they find that they have officially apologized. About the lack of 3D, or uh, about the lack of Nintendo Switches uh, made available, uh, mm. they've officially apologized. But they only did it, so far as I know, to their Japanese audience because the apology was was put out only in, J in Japanese. So I gotta fuck it. The rest of the world will translate it. Well, I guess that's what happens when you drop two nukes on a country <laughs> is they kind of hold a grudge um, about that. It's like, but uh, they yeah. released the same game four hundred times. They're blaming Apple for for the reason that they can't produce enough switches. Did it? Anyway. What does Apple have? Why to Why is do Apple with the robbing all their slave labor or something? No, they're robbing all of their grass. There's a ch I forget the name of the chip. It's like an AM like it's some sort of AMD chip. Okay. That's used in in the Switch. Is also used in, I think, the new iPad that's coming out, or is that oh, the I iPad bet, or the Oh, I bet. Yeah, I bet uh, Nintendo's mad at me for AMD sending me that graphics card. The, if you're you, part of the problem, Aaron. <laughs> if you want things like that, just be better at business. You can't blame the fact that like this other company is doing a better job and taking all of your stuff. It's like, what are they supposed to do? Make yeah. less iPads? Hell no, they're not going to make less iPads. But here's the th here's the thing about it. like Nintendo is a company that is a hard. It's not like. Like, if Bethesda suddenly came out and was like, we're building the console, like, you can understand they <sighs> fucked it up. Yeah. Nintendo has been... This is Nintendo's one, two, three, four, five, six, seventh console, not including all the handhelds. Yeah. And all the special editions of each console and all that kind of stuff. And, and, and all the peripheries and whatever. Like, you've you've been doing this for over 30 years, Nintendo. Like, know how to... Like, I hate people like, oh, well, it's obviously not Nintendo. So, yeah, well, I'm still blaming Nintendo because yeah. they're a multi-billion dollar hardware, software, video game manufacturer yeah. that's been around since the 70s doing this stuff, and you're telling me they don't have the common business sense to be able to find another manufacturer of this chip or to work around their supply problems? Yeah, well, even <clears throat> even in the case where it's like, you know, the the supply or the resources are out of our hands... Don't release the thing until you have enough shit to ship. Yeah. Just Apple should release that, that statement that Nintendo made, as an advert for them. Be like, look how good we are. This company complained about how good we were. Oh, they're just too good. They're, yeah. they, uh, they're just making too many products. We can't make enough. They can make as many as they want. The, uh, like that should be that should be the Apple ad. That'll be it. And then they got Justin Long on there, and then it's over. <laughs> the, uh... Take that, Nintendo. Uh, just... <laughs> That's the whole idea. Yeah. So I guess that's all the Nintendo stuff, is it? I yeah, guess. I mean that's really it in terms of Nintendo. I just like I just the f I don't even know if it's audacity, but just like the late like oh yeah, it's partly you know they weren't like super vindictive towards Apple, but they said yes, it is at you know Apple. We're competing with Apple for these chips. Yeah, um, be better. I thought you were gonna say your audio was fucking up because you said audacity. Uh, Aaron's making a joke that the word audacity has like a oh. meaning is used as a word but is also the recording software we use to record these podcasts. Gotcha. You're, gotcha. you're confused by that. I'm sorry. I, well, I didn't... I thought I might have fucked up and said audacity when I meant Apple. So I was... Anyway. Uh, oh, oh, you did then because you said I don't know if it's audacity. No, I said... No, he said I... I he's... he's uh, oh my God. I'm surprised they have the audacity <laughs> okay. to go and blame... Because what problems. I heard is I don't know if it's audacity, but anyway, continue. Because well, that's it. Stupid. That's all I wanted to say. Yeah. All right. The um, uh, what else we got? Uh, we got to talk about. Can I? Just... I hate people who are like just I don't even know if, like what the right term is. Are un like will forgive fanboys? I suppose are unforgiving to any company. Or like, are not unforgiving. Are totally forgiving of any company's faults. Like it'd be like that'd be like saying like Microsoft um, or Intel. Sure. Intel's making a new you know processor that's gonna mm -hmm. come out and like mean all the PCs or whatever. 
and Nintendo uh, needs to, uh, or and, and they can't they can't compete because uh, Nvidia is using the same chip. And it's like, well, and they're like, well, we're sorry. And people are like, well, it's obviously not you know Intel's fault that they can't get enough chips. Like, yeah, it is because they're fucking <laughs> so, like they're hardware company. That's what they do is they make these fucking devices. Get it right. I don't yeah, even know. Yeah, if you do something, it's your responsibility to do it well. It's like, you know, the, there there can be all the excuses in the book, but, like, there's lots of stuff they that where businesses can not succeed, and I don't like it that they come out every... Oh, there's a, there's a problem. Here's the trouble we're having. It's like, I don't care. Fix it. <laughs> like, go do something. Like, what do you think? I'm going to strategize here? We're going to have a little synergy meeting here now over this conference? Like, just, like, <laughs> figure it out. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's, it's uh, figure, figure your shit out when it's your responsibility. So yeah. we said we talk about Bethesda's Creation Club this week. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, and we will. So Bethesda's Creation Club is uh, they were gonna do paid, seamless transition. They, they were gonna do uh, how'd paid, you do that? Rory? Last year they were gonna do uh, some paid mods, and everyone was like, "No, you can't do paid mods." So has there been an update on that, or is Bethesda sticking to their guns? From what I hear, Bethesda sticking, sticking to their, to their guns. guns. So, and after the backlash, they decided not to do paid mods. Now they're gonna do paid mods, and that's it. Well, let's episode? not have it be dollars. Let's have it be Bethesda box or something. Aaron, uh, just to pause briefly, was that the dude from uh, from Journey who just walked off to the left there? Uh, yeah, he showed up a couple of times. I made a reference to it being uh, Ruby. Oh, okay. Is beginning. it Ruby? It's absolutely Ruby. Oh, That's cool. the twist. Ying! Okay, Jesus. All right, sorry. Go ahead, Roy. Yeah, so they're doing paid mods now because um, it didn't work before. And now they're gonna do it. Uh, yeah, I don't. Understand. I don't like. It's not even like. I, <laughs> so is that across the board now? Because uh, basically, what they announced at E3 is that uh, Skyrim and Fallout 4 will have mods. Those games already had integrated mod. Uh, I don't know what you call it. Interfaces where you could download mods, yeah. like basically in the game. So now is that, you can is that now the developers, changing? Developers, though. Aaron. So is that interface Couldn't now that being before. changed to Creation Club, or is it separate? Um, okay, uh, that is the part I don't know. The, the the interesting thing is, so there's, Bethesda's doing something very interesting. It's very difficult to do. They're trying to introduce a middleman. It's, it's very, it can be hard to take out middlemen from processes that have them, but it's exceptionally difficult to introduce one in a process that's already streamlined. If I want to, if I want to make a mod, I go do it using the tools Bethesda has given me, and they're quite good about that. Like, you know, their whatever it is, the GEC or the, um, yeah. you know, creation kit, whichever you're using. And, uh, like, I can go do that. And then if I want people to support me, I can start a, any number of the various things you can get for people to support you for your work. I don't need... Wh- why does Bethesda need to help in this pro- procedure at all? Does Bethesda own any shares in, in, in uh, Patreon? I... Uh, not to my knowledge. Okay, well, oh, I see where, yeah. Well, yeah, I, I, I know why they're doing it. I'm saying it's it's dumb. <laughs> no, they got to make their money, man. They've only made some of the most successful, well-selling games of all time. They got to make more. Yeah. <laughs> why can't they just run? Oh, okay, I'm not paying attention. That's one thing I hate about in this game. I'll just backtrack to rhyme for a second. Is the camera likes to go on a journey every now and then around the <laughs> yeah, map? I was gonna say, hey. and the controls are relative to the camera position, That's not dumb. your character. That's yeah, a... it's it's really aggravating. Yeah. but whatever. Um, why don't they just run like like if you have your Bethesda mod store or whatever, just run ads on it and make money that way. The and and some of them and they. So like some some creators seem to in, enjoy the procedure. They say it's a, a good procedure, and that's fine. I just don't I don't see why this was a unnecessary thing to do. It was mods were fine, and also if you know if the issue is somehow something to do with con like I don't think like that fox has got a lot of mange because he's losing fucking fur fast. Like I'm not sure if this is. Partly, like, I think the whole thing that Bethesda is doing with mods is strange. I thought doing mods on consoles was strange and not worth the effort. Uh, now, you say that, I do enjoy mods on consoles, because I've never really been able, I've never really had a computer powerful enough 
to play mod, you know, you know, Bethesda games with mods. Mm. So the, the ability to do it on my console now, that's actually, it's quite nice. Now, it's not every mod. It's obviously not as good as the PC version where you have access to every mod. There are only certain mods that are on this thing. Yeah. But it's still nice. Like, I got uh, uh, my version of Skyrim. I've modded that. You know, I got a couple of NPCs. I got, like, weather textures. Uh, you know, like environmental texture upgrades. Um, I got new quest lines, new gear, that sort of thing. And, it, you know, it just it helps with the experience. So I get that, but I just don't like... I don't understand why they I mean, did it. I'm yeah. just saying, like, it, it seems like they're creating a lot of additional work for themselves. Uh, and I'm not huge on companies creating extra work when they really have their hands full with the existing work. I just don't understand, like, why they... Why they, Oh, by the way, Rory, did I ever tell you about my idea for a, uh, for a company? So it, it's, a, it's a company that mm -hmm. when you, uh, you, you... When you order a pizza... This so it's a pizza company. No, no, we don't make the pizza. We just deliver it for you. So we go to the pizza place of your choice. Yeah. And we get the pizza and we drive it to you. My friend actually owns that company. That's a real company? Yep. That's the stupidest thing I've well, ever Well, no, heard it delivers all sorts of food. Okay, no, the, uh, the, my company just does pizza. The Oh, your company just does pizza? Oh, yeah. well, that, my friend's going to put you out of business. <laughs> yeah, also, yeah, my brother-in-law runs a similar company that uh, delivers food. I get like the food. Does it do? Anyway. Does it do pizza? It does a bunch of restaurants in town. Oh, okay, yeah. No, mine only does pizza because why? Why go with the pizza service? You know, pizza delivery service that we we currently have. Um, you know, with with within the store when you could go with my company. I gotta say something about pizza. Shit. I know yeah. it's not on the topic list because why would we put pizza? Well, on Aaron, the topic add it. List? But like, um, stop everything. Uh. <laughs> I, I, got, I got to say something about pizza just because, well, we don't have a lot of topics on this thing. Uh, and uh, um, so Little Caesars just opened in the city we live in. We didn't have a Little Caesars before. Um, I kind of want to go back to that time. Uh, yeah, yeah, me too, Adam. Uh, right, what's and, wrong with Little Caesars? Uh, I'll tell you exactly what's wrong with Little Caesars. All right, let's do it. So I've, I know what little, about Little Caesars, what many people from Eastern Canada know about Little Caesars, which is fucking nothing. I knew they had ads on television, and that's what I had seen. So, but I have certain assumptions on what I'm going to get when I go into Little Caesars. I was thinking there was going to be a table, maybe, or a chair. Uh, there wasn't any of those, the, the newfangled things. Um, uh, it had a floor that was, that was big. Um, except it wasn't actually physically large, which is my next point. That I walk into Little Caesars, but I can't actually walk into Little Caesars, you see. I can't get more than one foot in the door, because it's jam-packed. And there's what no pizza? lineup to speak of. No one knows oh, what so the... Oh, it's a scrum. It's just a bunch of people. Yeah, it's a scrum from, like, if you watch rugby, it's that. At the beginning, when they do the the, <laughs> the rugby scrum, that's what it is. But and you're totally fine with big whatever the hell it's called? Was it like Big Slice or something like Big that? Big Bite. Yeah, but yeah. at least Big Bite has chairs. You can go in and sit down. The, uh, wait barely. for your fucking pizza. So there's, there's no lineup to speak of. Everyone's just in the room, jam-packed in as much as they can fit in with each other. And when they say next, someone just goes. No <laughs> one knows what the order is. Whoever the bravest person is goes. Right? It's like Spartan pizza. Uh, and uh, then... Uh, so it's called Little Caesars. We, Do you want to get your pizza now, or possibly get into a fight? The uh, <laughs> so there, there's there's Persians coming over the wall. You got to stop them. Some people are Persian waiting for pizza. their pizza. Some people are about to get their pizza. There's no discerning. There's no order numbers or distinguishing factors on how you would like. I or I don't recall any order numbers at least. So me and my friends decide to get some of the like uh, the oh, breadsticks or whatever, right? Hmm. Uh, because hell if we were waiting in that heater for uh for an actual pizza because the breadsticks they just pull out of like an oven thing and they just give them to you so that's what we got and it was like this this whole operation is just an absolute disaster no one knows what's happening the uh, and i i just don't i don't understand how uh an actual place run by actual human beings who are alive can be so ill prepared for their opening knowing that they're a well-known place like people know what Little Caesars is, as much as I'm now starting to wonder why. The, uh, like, it's a, they know people are gonna go there. It's also worth noting that the town we live in, it, like, is kind of a place where, like, some businesses from outside have tried to succeed, and it doesn't work. Target? 
okay, well, to be fair, the reason Target failed here is because Target failed everywhere in Canada. Target, Target Canada failed. That's true, but just in general, just, like, places here. Yeah. Also, like, I, I, I thought it I, was because they were more expensive. The, uh, they, it, they that was won. part of it, yeah. yeah. And there, there's, a, there's a thing that I wrote, I was thinking about this the other day. We, we had a conversation during our Prey series about, like... How many weird tiny a malls? Careful conversation. There, there were in our, uh, in, in our yeah. in our city. Like, there's like five dead malls that are really small. <laughs> yep. And like, I was thinking about this the other day. We live in a city where a whole bunch of places just make no sense. Like, like McDonald's makes sense, right? Like, if you look at a McDonald's, like so you see a McDonald's let's, on the street. Aaron, let's follow this train <laughs> right to the end of the other rail. So. <laughs> You You're pass ready for this journey, my friend. And I'm like, so. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba, it makes sense. <laughs> I'm, sure, <laughs> I'm, I'm sure, Adam, that no one has ever asked you, like, to justify a McDonald's. But if I was driving, we, you and I are driving, and I we pass a McDonald's, and I say, Adam. Let's be honest. Justify the. Well, I'm driving. Yeah, you're driving. Yeah, justify the existence we. of that McDonald's. You go. Well, you know, Rory, McDonald's is a, a popular place. People like it. It does good business, one can only assume. And uh, there wasn't a McDonald's there before, and they thought people would come to it, and they'd make good money, and so they built one. And I'd be like, okay, Adam, that makes sense. I'd never have to think about that again, because it makes perfect sense. And then, like, alternatively, there's this pet grooming place in the city called Wigwags. Now, I pass by wigwags. You bring up song. wigwags like every second time I hang <laughs> out with you, it's man. It's a fascinating thing. I pass by it every day for eight years, it feels like. And it was always, always fucking closed. And then out of nowhere, they opened up a second location. And that's always fucking closed. And I just... <laughs> see, that's a place that makes no sense. It's that Chinese restaurant on Ken Mount Road that no one's been to in 10,000 fucking years? That makes no sense. Like, Why are you bringing this up on a gaming popular call? You're know. making a bunch of references to jokes and nobody outside of, like, the one... I'm just like, Thomas fascinated. Is I'm just fascinated that there are all these places here. Like the two and Lander. I was like, ah, oh, wigwags! I don't it's bring my stuff there because it's closed. <laughs> like, I don't understand. I just, I just, I'm just puzzled by the town I live in. I've been thinking about this a lot lately. Anyways, we're done talking about the Bethesda Creation Club now. Uh, are we? Because I had some stuff to say. Okay, what do you have to say about the Bethesda? Fuck off change on Caesar's Pizza and leave the wig wags. You fucking idiot. So, with this, are they replacing... So, are you... When this creation thing comes out are you no longer going to be able to just to have mods like is nexus mods going to be like no i'm sure that won't be it that would be phenomenally stupid okay so you so these are going to be like premium mods i, I don't see how there's any way they'd be able to prevent that i anyway. think they're bethesda approved mods that like you, well, what you, the you, fucking different what's the difference between that and the regular mod uh nexus uh, mods will have boobs and dicks and yeah, but bethesda's creation club will not yeah bethesda's creation club is going to have like well, funny cowboy hats well what's the point it's, it's, there's no point. It's dumb. It's you want dumb me to idea. pay for not boobs? Good yeah. luck, Bethesda. Good luck, Pete Hines. Would you like to wear You're, Lucas uh, Sims's you, hat in, this, <laughs> in Fallout Four? You have, pay me three hundred dollars. <laughs> you have, you have a. Uh, <laughs> you, you was like pay for not boobs. I ha you have a hard enough time convincing me to pay for boobs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is a bad idea. It's just a bad it's, it's idea. Stupid. But it leads well into our next bad idea, which is this Grand Caesar's Theft Auto pizza. bullshit. <laughs> the um, I'll make up for my terrible segue into Caesar's Little Caesar's Pizza by making up for this by using this much better segue into Grand Theft Auto, who's decided well, the, take two take specifically two. has decided that mods are not. <laughs> yeah, like mods are dumb. Yeah, uh, single player mods, mods are only not. though. Yeah. Only uh, single player mods. Only single player. Only mods that don't actually affect them in any way and don't actually affect anyone else. If I install. If I want to wear Lucas Sims's hat in Grand Theft Auto V, what do you keep that doesn't him affect up? anyone else. Who is Lucas Sims? He was the mayor in Megaton in Fallout 3. Oh, okay. And I always remember him because my dad's copy of Fallout 3 is messed up, so Lucas Sims left Megaton. Now he just wanders the wasteland aimlessly talking about sheriff business. The, uh. <laughs> But the um yeah wow well, uh yeah this is this is just stupid it, it it's it's stupid to do it now 
Is 2017, haven't we fought and won the war against DRM and Ultimate Company Control? Apparently not, because, you know, fuck the fucking... They're thinking about, you know, centering the internet again, so... Yeah, well, so basically what happened with that story is Take-Two came out and, and there was a tool... We kind of touched this on last week, but mm-hmm. there's a tool called Open4, which was pretty much specifically for... Uh, Single player mods. Now, people recently had started using it to kind of lead into more malicious online mods, but generally speaking, it was its primary function was just for single player stuff, and so that's why it, it sort of led to its ban. Um, and they've they've since banned a, a number of other modding tools as well, which for were for online tools uh, or for online mods, which nobody in the community really seems to have a problem with because there was a lot of kind of bullshit going on in the community um and so uh rockstar have apparently negotiated with take two and they released a statement talking about uh potentially not or or not punishing creativity in their community which i guess would be single player mods and yeah you know some like police mods and and different uh kinds of tools to just really change the game into something that gta really isn't and to kind of make it more fun and they they have I guess negotiated or reached some sort of negotiation with uh, Take Two, and they've they've said it, the their negotiation really de- uh, determined nothing because it, it just says like um, we we will generally is the word they use not take legal action against the community, but you know, so it bas- it basically goes on to say you can do whatever you want, but we may just randomly decide to take legal action against you. It's like it really. It's it's kind of like okay. I guess this is a step in the right direction, but it doesn't really determine anything for for I like the that. Community. I like that. Like a vague threat. It's like you can do whatever you want, but you know, occasionally, I'll fucking kill you. <laughs> yeah. Take two is a dumb company. God damn it. Yeah, they're not great. They've made I, some really... interesting choice. Was well, this so like anti-consumer? Like I've never like that's it's so like mods are pretty much universally. Beloved? Not. I don't even know if "beloved" is the correct term here. And it's a big part of PC gaming for sure. Yeah, but I mean, like, it's it's certainly for me. You know, well, not for me, but like, well, mods have been around basically since the beginning. They're widely. It's yeah. like um, uh, it, it's like tailgate parties for football. Like, it's just something that's ingrained in the culture. And if you try to take that away, people are gonna get upset about it because it's something. It's it's not harming anybody. Yeah. Yeah, really, exactly. I mean, it, I mean, I guess like the online mods can be a big pain in the ass for GTA, but but the, but Rockstar, what they should have done is they should set up servers and say this is mod servers, so you can have whatever mods you want in this server. That's fine, playing here at your own risk, and no mod servers or special service servers that don't allow s- only certain mods. Yeah, um, that that's still kind of like you know, I guess that's the realistic response to it but i guess people from the outside of anyone who hasn't played gta 5 or G- gta online like it's 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 an ecosystem they have microtransactions now that's a different argument unto itself whether or not you're for or against the microtransactions in the game but having mods the reason the, they banned mods was because it it kind of counter it was kind of counterintuitive to their ecosystem. Wasn't that how you got all your money in that game? Was by more or less. I mean, it wasn't me modding personally. It was modders giving me money, and I, me having no choice but to take it. <laughs> the money was literally raining on you. Wasn't they it? would they would just spawn a money bag above your head, and it would drop into you, and you would just collect money. There was nothing you could do about it. Uh, and in other what cases, you... people would take money from you. So it's like that was their community. If you opened up servers for modding. It kind of doesn't fix the problem because then you just have everybody modding and the Rockstar isn't making any money off their shark cards. I I suppose, so, but and in the same case, like fuck you, dude. you gotta like you gotta realize that it's it's much harder to have you know, especially with a game like GTA, like a, such a big game with such a big community, having having microtransactions in that game is always going to be a problem because people are going to be able to find a way yeah. around it. You know what I mean? And I don't think Rockstar or Take Two really had an answer to that. You know. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's it. Uh, it's a kind of a, a, a debate going any which way you look at it. You don't have market transactions then, or maybe have mod servers, or you know, it's it's. This was def- the d- decision they made was the wrong one though. Like the first decision, I'm gonna say, like definitively, no matter what way what way you spin it, like 
I think like fucking with the modders was a poor decision. Yeah, there has to be like I'm not saying I have the solution here, but there has to be a solution to this situation. Like one that you know you there has to be something else that can be done that fi- you know that, that that doesn't punish the people who are just because there were a lot of mods you know that were taken down from this site that they look pretty cool like there was one, like all of the mods that um, Funhouse did in their GTA mod series uh, were all in the single player so like people would add in like Green Goblin and like you know yeah. Hulk and Thor and all that kind of stuff and those are fine you know funny and whatever like they did like Thomas the Tank Engine and Star Wars stuff and that was you know mostly harmless and but you know obviously a lot of work went into them but then other people put in like actual like story content yeah and you know or or, or improved uh, improved the animation improved the graphics you know all, all the mm-hmm. stuff that mods can do when we played Oblivion we had that sweet dream mod thing oh man <laughs> <laughs> remember all the <laughs> fucking shat that that's $400 now Rory <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Don't you remember that, Rory? Every time we wanted to do anything in the game, the game crashed, <laughs> and all the none of the NPCs knew what the fuck they were doing. Yeah, they crashed. Because it was improved DLCs, cities, fucking <laughs> ominous Philidae, or whatever the fuck his name was, wouldn't go for a fucking swim. <laughs> the um, yeah, uh, yeah, the. So yeah, I don't know. I'm just paid mods are. I'm gonna pay mod. Well, you know, pay mods for Bethesda, but taking taking mods, I don't. This is a. A brush fire tactic for a this is a, this is a this is a like a a, a very severe tactic for yeah. a, you know for something that do, that does not require it you know what I mean like this is it, it this is a thing that required um this was a this was a problem that required a really nuanced solution and they came in with a hatchet but I, to solve it yeah. you know I also I don't think like the, there's too much of this like companies not being satisfied with the way mods the way mods currently are is pretty good like it's not broken do you know what i mean yeah. like also like, also fix your damn broken games before screwing with mods yeah like the, well, it's not even the case with gta like, no, no not, I, not with gta but with bethesda yeah like under i understand in gta like oh yeah we can we need we can't have mod, on, you know online mods because of the microtransactions but at the same time like why the fuck does gta 5 need microtransactions hasn't rockstar made enough money from that fucking game already it's one of the best selling games of all time it came out four f- how many years ago four years ago now 2013 was when that came out for the original you know when the xbox and the ps3 it came out four years ago Go, people are. It still has a very active online community, and you're telling me you're not making enough money from that? Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I really don't think that it's it's. I I, I kind of wonder what is Rockstar's decision and what Rockstar's or, or what what's Take Two's decision because it does seem like a lot of this stuff is like Take Two's like do this and they're like all right and then yeah especially now in this situation Rockstar definitely seems to be defending the community but. Trying, I agree. I trying think, to be and diplomatic they always have, about they it. They always have supported mods. Yeah, so, I mean, the microtransactions may not have even been their idea, so it's it's Got really, it's a hard one to call. Hands. That yeah. said, I would love, you know, I love, I don't mind supporting Rockstar, not that I've really spent money on these cards, but, uh, you know, I, I love Rockstar games. I, you know, they're all great, generally. And, and Rockstar is, uh, Rockstar to me is a lot like, um, you know, they're one at, uh, who, uh, Frontier. They're very active. They're uh, or uh, or who made the Witcher series? CD Projekt CD, Red. CD Projekt Red. Like these are companies that are very active with their communities and very respectful of both their games, their players, and video games as a medium. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's I've always respected those companies that do that much more so than say Square Enix or Ubisoft or something like that. Where it's you know it's you know they still make fun games or whatever, but they don't have that same level of respect for me, and I don't have that same level of respect for them. But you know I've always respect you know respected Frontier for what they do for to their games, uh, and what they do for their community. I mean GTA, I bought that game for what like eighty dollars, and since then there's been like what like twenty five free content expansions coming out that have come out for that game series in that time. Every, yeah, once every couple of months with new cars, new weapons, new things to do. 
these are expansive things to do. Like that gun running yeah. thing. Uh, there's a lot to do in that. And I mean, you know, that's the answer to your question. That's where that's why the microtransactions exist. It's either microtransactions, which are you know, you know, in in, in all seriousness, in all seriousness, probably a bit overpriced, but. Uh, that's where the content is. That's what the content is for. I mean, you get these super massive content packs that are free all the time. I mean, even if you don't spend any money on the shark cards, there's still something for you to do. Yeah. It may not be uh, super in depth, or you may only get to really scratch the surface of it, but you can you still get something for free. Yeah, but at the same, like I don't know if I wouldn't. And just I mean, rather... even even then, you can you can just join cruise online and, and get the experience all of it. I yeah. Mean, for somebody who's spending money on this stuff. But I don't know if I just wouldn't rather spend just $20 every year for, uh, you know, another bunch, you know, for a larger... Like, I'm not saying that's what I would prefer. I'm just saying I'm not sure if if, if Rockstar is... If this method is entirely better. If it, if it's, if it means the destruction of... Or, the dis- you know, the end of mods for this game. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know if that's... I don't think so. I don't think we've seen the full story of this yet. It definitely yeah. seems like Rockstar is not done with it. Yeah, hmm. so. we'll have to have to wait in the future. It's a complex issue for, and it's kind of a, an issue that's going to become more relevant as you know as and, we go you know, on. And you you say that like you look at a lot of like these you mentioned Frontier and CD Projekt Red. I think they self publish as well. Do they yeah. not? Like these are self publishing developers that are very respected in the community. I really don't see why Rockstar can't be an independent studio. Yeah, I mean they're. One of the Rockstar. most triple A studios in the business. Why? Why do they need Take Two? I mean, every game that Rockstar has come out with in the last like what 10, 15 years has been an instant mega hit. GTA yeah. Four, all of its expansions, and all, and GTA Four had some great expansions. I mean, the Ballad yeah. of Gay Tony and the Lost and Dam, just two off the top of my head. Um, Bully was really well received. Red Dead Redemption that was yeah. amazingly well received. They also made all the Midnight Club games, and those did well back in their day. Yeah, and the Warriors game that was fantastic. Yeah, yeah. I don't think they've made a bad game. I don't. I would check, one. but I don't have my phone on. The, me. the worst one I can think of is Beat Raider, and. I mean, even for what that was, it was still pretty good. Yeah. So, never played it myself, but the, it was just kind of like a music maker. They're a good studio, like I think, like totally. The uh, is it the one with the dog? The rapping that? dog, like he had like like it was a very cartoony dog with headphones. Uh no. Okay. I think it was I, scale bound. I think there was like a musician involved with it, um, but it was just kind of like a fairly simple beat maker. It wasn't anything oh, okay. elaborate. <laughs> Anyway, we should probably move on from this and talk about... Oh, Christ. <laughs> what? Oh, what? <laughs> All right, so Tekken so 7. Oh, Christ. So, there's a bit to say about Tekken 7. All right, so Tekken 7 finally came out, Rory. Tekken 7 came out. Um, in America. I, uh, yeah, in, in America. Uh, for the civilized Not world. Not on, on consoles and uh, PCs. Blatant bit so, of racism there from Aaron. So, I was going to get, I was gonna get uh, Tekken 7 on PS4. For like the player base, for one thing, but also because when you hear about a game that's traditionally a console game, and then you hear it's going to be on PC, you sort of do the, uh, you know, you so, you think about, you know, all the bad. Roy, what are you talking uh, about? Arkham Knight was great. <laughs> exactly right. You think about like all the just horrendous PC versions of things, and like I didn't assume that was going to happen, but it's like you never made a Tekken on PC. It's never happened, and there's been a lot of those games. Uh, never come out at on least PC? seven. Uh, yeah, plus, yes. Plus the two in Tekken Tag Seven. Yeah. Two. Oh, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. There's been seven numbered games, yeah, the two Tekken then, Tag tournaments, and Tekken Revolution, and none of them are on <coughs> PC. The fuck yeah, I saw. I read the description. Revolution. It said like Tekken Seven and uh, joined the ninth round of the like. Wait, yeah. Uh, Tekken <laughs> Revolution is some bullshit that you don't have to worry about. Okay. But, um, it does exist. Apparently, uh, it counted and, though. What? It counted. Uh, yeah, I guess. And uh, so, uh, I was, I was, uh, but then. Uh, one of the Tekken streamers I watch, I noticed he got it on PC, and he was, and I saw how good uh, the PC version was. And I was like, I want to play with him. And uh, I had to, I had to, I had to get it on PC because of how good the version was. And it's like the proper, it, the PC version of anything should be better than the console. Well, version. especially because they've been working on it for like fourteen years. Yeah, exactly. And it is better than, and it should, it is, and should be better than the console version. Um, I hear a butt coming. No, actually, oh, that's okay. just a, that's just a nice thing Sorry, I'm gonna I say about it. it. No, I'm, I'm just a... super impressed. Okay, is it is it broken though? No, not at all. It's brilliant. Oh. Uh, it's 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 
it's excellent. And one of the things that really interests me about the release of this game is all I, like outside of like like I'll obviously watch like the fighting game YouTubers oh. they watch. They'll talk about it, right? But that's not you know that that has minimal impact, right? And but then I will watch like IGN talk about it, GameSpot talk about it. Like everyone loves it. And my and I think that Tekken is is actually like I think this is the perfect thing for the resurgence of Tekken and I think it's going to sort of finally hit it big again. Um, because I don't think Tekken has really been properly big since the third one, like outside of like Tekken fans and stuff yeah. like that. But everyone played like Tekken three on the, like the PlayStation or that was during like the heyday of arcades in North America. And, yeah, uh, I mean Tekken was Tekken three was the first PS two game, wasn't it? Uh, that's when that's when Tekken really hit its stride for me. Was on the PS two. Oh, right on. Yeah, the uh, and it, it, Tekken Tag came out in the PS two, wasn't it? it? It did. Yes, the uh, and um, it was it and 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 that game was brilliant. The uh, but, um, so I'm excited of, of, for, like, the future of Tekken in that way, and it seems like a lot of people that would otherwise, like, Funhouse did a video on Tekken 7, the Let's Play dudes did a video on Tekken 7, freaking PewDiePie did a video on Tekken 7, and you know what, I watched it and it didn't suck. Um, didn't it? Uh, no, no, it didn't at all. The amount of people that hate PewDiePie, like, that I, like, it seems like almost yeah. every YouTuber does not like him. Oh, yeah, I, I don't, I don't, I don't dislike him, I just, I don't, his videos aren't my thing, but his video is actually pretty funny. But what I'm saying is, well, yeah. how is he so popular if nobody likes him? Well, the viewers love him. Yeah, fellow YouTubers don't like him because he make, he steals all their money. The, uh, yeah, he does viewers very like well. Viewers like him because... Uh, and he's talented at what he does, uh, I just don't much like what he does. It's mm. not, I, I'm sure the gentleman is all right. I don't um, endorse racists. Um... And, uh, it was, uh, so, like, that kind of stuff, when you see that kind of thing happening, when you see PewDiePie do a Tekken video, you know something is happening, right? Uh, and then, you know, however many, like, bazillion people are gonna see that video. Because, you know, somebody like PewDiePie would never do a, uh, an obscure game or anything like that. No, but, like, it's not, you he's know what I mean? He's playing his indie like, game, Tekken 7. It's not like he's playing a game to point out, like, the comedic value of something. Yeah, he's genuinely enough. playing the game, right? Fair enough. And, uh... What did he play as? Uh, he played as Bob. Oh, God. Um... Is that the body diaper guy? Uh, no. <laughs> oh. Uh, that's Heihachi. Yeah, that's right? Heihachi. That the yeah, microwave. That's right. Yeah, that's who he's talking about, yeah. The, um... Also, they make power drills, I think. And, uh... <laughs> um... Uh, and so I have played Tekken 7 and as And sex well. toys. I think Tekken 7 is so good, it's absurd. Uh, it's obviously mechanically good, because it's a fighting game, and if it wasn't mechanically good, who would play it? Street Fighter Five. <laughs> um, and, uh... So that's impressive. The story. All right, let's get into is, this. So there's this is different than the other Tekken games. It oh yeah, has a yeah. Story I, mode. There was a there was a story mode in the last one. Wasn't there, it? No, it's not. A, uh, well, okay, sorry, Aaron, go ahead. And I'll there was a description. The description on Steam is like, it's it's like so English. It's like enjoy this super fighting game with narrative st uh, narrative story in each round of fight. It's like well, what? <laughs> so, so well, what? Yeah. So what? So what? It was other games had like a stage you play through with each character, right? Like I'll play through the twelve stages or whatever it is with each character, and each character has a beginning and end. This has a campaign mode with a bunch of characters in it, and you but play thought, as different characters as you go through it. I thought Tekken Six had that because I remember one part in Tekken Six where you had to fight a bunch of it was the robot, the Terminator. Jack. Yeah, you had to fight like like twenty of him like in a big scrum. They just have that. I think that was one of the game modes or something. But this is like oh. a proper fleshed out campaign. All right. And uh, all right. Well, which which like fucking Egyptian deity do they have to stop this time in order for him to like not take over the fucking PMC military company? Oh, that it's, it's just up for grabs again in this tournament. The Did that guy story... open up his restaurant or whatever eventually. <laughs> Was uh, he still at it? Uh, uh, he actually he didn't appear. He didn't feature at all in the story. Oh, he must have retired so and opened up his restaurant. Only some of the characters <laughs> feature in the story. It's basically it's the story of Kazuya versus Heihachi. It sort of brings that to a wrap. He opened a uh, restaurant. Did he bring it to called... a wrap like in the first game where he beat the shit out of him? No, but then it wasn't done because then they got yeah you know they've been carrying this on for a long time. That's, what about what about like Jin? Is that his name? The son yeah, of Kazuya? He features, Jin yeah, or so. he features in the story. How old is Kazuya? Kazuya must be like fucking forty because they're Jin all is like a thousand. Okay. Like they're all really old. Um, and it's the, so the story. Let's get this clear. The story's not good. It, it, it wraps up things. Mm. It's, it does good lore things. It like wraps up questions. Wouldn't you might have been have had. my guess. But it's not good. And 
But what really makes it not good is the voice acting, because every character is flawlessly voice acted except the narrator. This narrator... Is it Tom Kane? No, it makes Tom Kane look good. Stop That's how bad he is. Stop fucking bragging on Tom <laughs> Kane. <laughs> every time we're like, oh man, check out the voice actor in this guy. Is it Tom Kane? I, I cried tears wishing for Tom Kane in this game. The, uh, like, this guy Opposed is to what? so bad. Like, it's, it, it's almost indescribable. He sounds bored and confused reading it. He's like, Mishima Zaibatsu. <laughs> and it's like a statement, and he reads it as a question. It's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. And honestly, every time he came up, I was just, like, waiting to die. Bob the, uh, versus body diaper? The, <laughs> and it, was, it was just, it was terrible. But the actual game is very good. Um, the character roster is huge. Uh, like seven? The, no, like, it's, like, ex- like really expansive. Oh, okay. Like how, like, how many characters? Forty. Like, all of them that you would care about, except, like... If you like played like One. Anna in Tekken Four or something, they uh oh, man, no Aunt, Aunt, for whatever Anna. reason. But how many of them are new? The blonde chick. No, uh, that's her sister Nina. Oh, um, how uh, many new characters, Roy? What? How many new ones? Uh, so uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna count them aloud because I I don't know offhand. So Shaheen, uh, is new. Is he like Katarina. the Middle Eastern? Yeah, guy? that's right. Yeah. All cool right. <laughs> yeah, uh, I liked him. He had a cool design. Katarina. Let's is talk new. about her for a minute. Okay. She has an interesting design. I'm in Pompeii. The, uh... Oh, cool. Why, why are you releasing... So are you little... thinking about the right character, Adam? Katarina's the one with the sunglasses and the, the white outfit. Who's the... Isn't there a cat chick? That's Lucky Chloe. Yes. Yeah, so Lucky Chloe's also new. Sorry, I assume that the cat character would be called Katarina. The, uh... Missed opportunity! The play. Uh, no, the cat character is Lucky Chloe. Um, Isn't this where F- F- Judge Frollo had his moral dilemma and fucking hunchback in Notre Dame? Judge Froyo? Frollo, you fucking idiot. <laughs> fucking Q-tips. Clean out your fucking ears. I don't know. Frollo still sounds like a dessert. <laughs> it kind of does. Yeah, it but it's a like fucking Hugo it's, Gerns. It's ba- Froyo with, made with Rolos. <laughs> <It's, laughs> oh, man. It's Frollo. <laughs> Oh, Man, I, get, I didn't make up the character's <laughs> name. Can you get Rolo ice cream? Oh yeah, you can totally get Rolo. Well, then ice cream. you got the Frollo. <laughs> we're, we're gonna do it. Perfect. <laughs> the um, uh, so those are three new characters offhand. There are probably other new characters that I'm not thinking about. Um, because of Roy's racist. Uh, but those are uh, those are three. Wait, who's who's the Middle Eastern like assassin looking dude Shaheen. again? Okay, for a second I thought you said. Hashish, and I'm like, so like, what, they call him fucking... <laughs> <laughs> it's like, hey, man! <laughs> I'm just here to get some grass, you know? I don't know what the <laughs> accent that is. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, and, His name uh, is Shisha. <laughs> so that I haven't, obviously, I've only, like, I, I played the, I had to, I, I had to play the game's whole story, because I couldn't come in here and talk about the game without having played through the whole story, so I haven't it's had a chance to play dragon all rock, the there. characters, so I've only gotten a chance to play... Uh, Lucky Chloe is the only new character I've played. So how long is the campaign? Um, like 300 hours? Uh, it's three and a half hours. Oh, okay. Um, you have to wonder how it took so long to make. <laughs> uh, and... Obviously, uh, it wasn't the story they were working on. Uh, yeah, really, though. And, um... Is, is King back? King is there, yeah. What about yeah. Metal King? Armor King and no. Oh. Um, Armor but King. I, but there's gonna be characters coming out as no. DLC. What about, uh... Alex, was it Alex the Raptor and Roger the the Kangaroo? Are they there? I haven't seen the Kangaroo. He's probably there. The two bears are there. You can oh, Panda and Kuma. Oh, okay, so so Akuma is in this from Street Fighter. Who? Aku- uh, some people say Akuma. Some people say Akuma. Uh, oh, they're gonna say some people say Matata. So. Oh well, then why did you ask who? No, I'm just like, give me a description <laughs> of what he looks like. Oh, I, I, uh, I like. It's like Rodney Dangerfield and a dragon. Like I don't know. Oh, like, okay. <laughs> the, um, uh, it doesn't that really clears look it like up. Anything. Man, it's a fucking <laughs> dragon or something. The um, like uh, oh, and no. and so like I so me and Aaron have the same opinion on bringing characters in from other franchises. It's dumb. Yeah, don't it's do a it. Dumb no, thing man, to do. Remember Walk when off. Darth Vader went up against fucking Yoshimitsu in the middle of fucking Soul Calibur? What the, was this? Uh, th- we had this conversation about a different game. What in was the it? E3, in the, during your E3, post-E3 show last year, you guys were playing Mass Effect 2. 
Oh and you God, were talking, the frame rate. Uh, and you were talking about characters being brought in. Um, you don't want to see Mario in Mass Effect. No, but what? See, that's Akuma right there. Oh yes, that um, timeless character. And uh, and uh, like he does a fine. He plays a really important role in the story, which I think is interesting. And, and he's gonna fuck off in the next like, one because the he's a fine character. Fun. But it's dumb to bring in other characters. It feels gimmicky. Make your own damn characters. Remember when Ezio <sighs> fought for Soul Calibur in Soul Calibur Five? Uh, how dumb would it be if you're playing Bioshock? And friggin' Darth Vader shows up. You'd be like, fuck out of here, Darth Vader. Like, Actually, that'd be... Fuck you, that'd be awesome. That'd be terrible. <laughs> that'd be awesome. Totally what game was it, it's though, It's dumb. Right? What, were, what game I don't was remember it? what game you were talking about. Because I, I remember, like, Adam being, like, all about it or something. Adam and Andrew were both all about it. Yeah, but, now, the, but now it's like... The group is divided on this was issue. Was Kingdom Hearts? Uh, I don't know. It might have been something like that. Oh, no, I can't see Andrew defending Kingdom Hearts. I yeah. just think, <laughs> I think it was... I, I, it just feels gimmicky to me. And it feels like something that fans want... But people who make the games realize they don't need to do. There's enough characters in Tekken. We don't need this just random asshole from Street Fighter. Like it's, it's. I don't know. Like it ruins think, the core Armored experience King was for right fans. On the cusp of getting into this game, like no, nah, we got to include fucking yeah, this dude from Street Fighter, Ken Hakihu or whatever his name is from Street Fighter. <laughs> the, uh, and and so that 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 sort of does rub me the wrong way. But there are still lots of Tekken characters. And what I like about the game is it hasn't like. It has. It's made it sort of accessible for new players in that there's like some cool new moves that like new players like to pull off. But it hasn't made the yeah. other things any less technical. Um, technical. Uh. uh <laughs> oh. <laughs> like you, 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 there's oh, still the, the reasons <laughs> oh. why. Ugh. And the practice mode is so good; it's Ugh. ridiculous. Because practice mode is so like Tekken was a Tekken Tekken Six had a practice mode, but there was no record function, so like you couldn't. So, like, it, it record function. So, if I'm in the practice mode of Tekken, right? And I'm practicing... So, you can beat off to your characters later, right? Like, I, 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 like I'm practicing blocking lows and then hitting back, right? So, that's what I'm practicing. So, I'm going to go in with... Because like, I've been playing Lucky Chloe lately. So, I'm going to go in with Chloe into the practice mode and I'm going to face King. And I'm going to... So, what I get to do with record is I get to take over King for a second. Record him doing a low. And then he'll just keep doing that on a loop. So I can keep practicing my, you know, my crouch and then, like, my while standing four. And, mm -hmm. like, which, like, if you know Tekken is, like, what you want. You block and you while standing four. Um, I thought you just mash all the buttons. Well, I mean, that's what most people do. And this is the first Tekken where I'm actually trying to get good at Tekken. And I'm not just trying to be better than most of my friends. Uh, and, uh... But, like, Tekken 6, you couldn't do that. And it's, like, it defeats the point of a practice function if I can't actually practice the moves. Like, imagine, like, I can't ask Aaron. I can't call up Aaron. Be like, hey, Aaron, what we're going to do is we're going to hop into a game, and you're just going to do lows for, like, an hour while I practice my shit. Actually, like, Aaron might be the least likely person that you could call <laughs> up to do that. I'm pretty sure if you call Trump, President Trump, you would have a better, play. yeah, than, than, than for Aaron to... Take an hour out of his day to play Tekken 7 to so help you with your fucking low block. Can you just play two-player with yourself? Yeah, but you can't, like, control... Like, I need both hands on my controller. Oh, so you want them to, to actually fight back. Yeah, like, I want I want him to do a low and I block and punish and, like, stuff like that. Like, uh, And you, there's no mode to set up the AI to just repeat a move or There whatever? is now. There oh, is okay. in Tekken 7, and there has been in other Tekken games, but there wasn't in 6. Oh, okay. For some six. dumb reason. Mm. Uh, and I actually, I think Trump would get a real kick out of playing King, to be honest. Um, the, hey, he's, uh, I can't even do a Trump impression. He's, uh, some sort of, uh... He's like Watto. <laughs> <laughs> it is some sort of, uh, uh Jaguar Man! The, uh, uh, by the way, Lucky Chloe's a great character for trolling people with. Um... But I build the wall around Mexico! The, uh, with my chance, Kubu! Sorry. She jumps into the game and she's like, "Hi!" And, I, and the opponent immediately is like, "I hate this person." Yeah. The um, but good, great game. We're gonna be doing a special in it coming up soon. Well, she's a, a Cloud Klu Klux Klander, isn't she? Like that's her character. She's a what? What was that word? She's what a Klu Klux Klander. So there's a in in TV in TV tropes. There's a term. There's a trope called Cloud Klu Klux Cloudlander, I think, and it's uh it's a term for a person who is 
their character is, is you find it a lot in Japanese anime. It, they're one of those like sassy girls who are just crazy, like out of their fucking mind. Oh right, yeah, kinda, yeah, yeah. Kind of personalities. That's that's the term for it, where they're just like you know like absolutely no fucking sense about what's going on with the world. So also, someone said I think it was IGN who said that the character customization in Tekken really does set the bar, and it does if you're talking about raw number of options. But, like, if you're talking about what you actually want to do, like, I've never looked at, like, a character and been like, you know what this guy needs? Bricks on his head. <laughs> or, you know what he needs? A shower head attached to his back. Like, those, those are options, but they're dumb options. Mm -hmm. Those are dumb things to do with a character. Mm -hmm. Nah, man, it helps prevent, it helps, uh, helps with the ground and <laughs> You could spend a million, like, fight gold, which is, like, the in-game currency, to give your character a tan. That... So... Is Yoshimitsu the worst swordsman in the world? Uh, it, yes. He's, he's yes, in, he is. Because I love Yoshimitsu. He's probably my favorite character because yeah, I just love cool, his... He's a cool fucking he, character. He, he's hard to play, and he's or at least he used to be in the Tekken. He is still hard to play. Um, and I've always liked that... Th th like that... <sighs> fucking Christ, Aaron. You know, only you can prevent forest fires. Um, I, I've always liked his character. He has, he has really cool moves. But he uses a sword in a mixed martial arts tournament... How is he not won by just True. slicing the Elisa, shit? Elisa, Elisa has chainsaws on her. Arms. Yo, how isn't she? She's a fucking robot with chainsaw arms, jetpacks, and fucking rocket fists. How is <laughs> she won? I'm pretty sure I also saw a screenshot of her with a Gatling gun, which that's I've in the campaign. Well, how hasn't she won the tournament? Like, uh, oh, she's not fighting in the tournament. She's fighting off uh, G corporations. You know what? It's kind of complicated. Because I can uh, just imagine, like, in the no, corner we have sorry, King. Yeah. You know, he's a Brazilian jiu-jitsu specialist. For Twenty years training for you know for this. He's one of the best in the world. And then this girl. And then this corner we have a sixty-pound robot anime girl with a chain gun. <laughs> <laughs> and fight. Yeah. Well, that was the thing that was dumb when, when Lucky when Lucky Chloe came out. All the Tekken character, all the Tekken fans were like, "She's." sucks i'm like you play as pa you main panda asshole like the like yeah. stop so this is a fucking i think we've talked about the absurdity of this game before but this is a game this is a fighting game it. you fucking just ate shit there uh this is a fighting game where some of the combat like you obviously have like you you know your your jujitsu your wrestler your yeah. uh your um jikundo yeah all that you know kung fu all that kind of stuff and then other members of of the fighting tournament are the Terminator, the Terminator's little Japanese sister, a guy with a sword, no less than two bears, yes, a boxing kangaroo, or a boxing velociraptor. You can take your pick on that one. Um, a tree? Is the tree still in there? Tree's not in this game. Oh, man. I think he'll be DLC. Um, and I'm pretty tree sure LC. there's a demon in there <laughs> as well, isn't there? Like, just a straight-up devil? Uh, there are multiple devils. Oh, okay. Well, that seems fair. The, uh, um, yeah, it's fucking it's, Jesus! You beat also, the shit out of that. Tekken, one. if you don't know, Tekken is a three D fighting game in a world of two D fighting games, which is really cool. Um, in a three D world of two D fighting games, because you can sidestep, you like into and out of the foreground, yeah. which is really cool. And a lot of games are just two D and they don't have that element. And also, Tekken, by the way. If you're looking to start it, you can pick it up and mash buttons and probably beat some of your friends, especially if you pick Eddie. Um, Does it have VR support on PC, Roy? I've heard that, but I, I it's a third per Like, I don't know why. I don't see the value in Tekken VR. At least Yoshimitsu makes sense in Soul Calibur, where everybody else has a fucking weapon. Yeah, exactly, yeah. All and right, we'll wrap it up. Yeah, and uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. You'll be seeing more Tekken 7 on this channel. This channel's going to be all about Tekken 7 oh, pretty soon. Christ. Uh, Tekken 7. Joe all right, so over. Better Call Saul Season 3 just wrapped up, apparently. It did. It's a good show. <laughs> Where you been on that Tekken 7 for 20 minutes? <laughs> no, I just, I just noticed that I looked at Aaron. He was just like, good show. I'm like, don't you want to do oh, a shit. whole rant like I just did? Like, Well, I mean, we are already over time. It's a great show. Everybody should watch it. Because, uh, you know, I don't think the ratings have been that great, but it's such a fantastic show that I don't want it to get canceled. Uh, so fucking watch it. Probably a lot of people pirate it. Uh, I mean, maybe. I don't know. Maybe count those ratings, AMC. Yeah, really, though. Idiots. Uh, and uh, we kind of, we definitely kind of detailed most of the story uh, leading up to it, but then stopped it because, again, vacation is in E3. But IO is now an independent studio. True story. So they don't have a publisher anymore. They're not doing, like, Kickstarter stuff. They're just doing their own thing with Hitman, and uh, that'll be great. They have plans to continue the game. They may downsize it a little bit. I don't know if they're going to go episodic, uh, continue with the episodic format or not. 
But uh, they will be making more Hitman stuff, so that's good. And they're also wrapping up the elusive targets soon for season one of Hitman. So uh, I don't know how I feel about that because there's some amount of content in the game that's kind of locked behind the elusive target wall. And it's not anything important. It's like outfits, like uh, variations of outfits. But I kind of want to get all of those. And I didn't really know about the the elusive targets or I didn't get the game really uh, before it was ultimately too late for me to do enough to get all of the rewards. So that kind of... I kind of w- hopefully they release something after the fact that allows me to get that stuff uh, through other means. But mm. uh, I'm happy that they're an independent studio now. So it gives it gives hope to other developers. Maybe Rockstar will take a fucking hint and <laughs> buy out their whatever their share is worth from Take Two. The uh, the fucking the, the best thing that you can probably do at this point is to get away from Square Enix. Yeah. Anyway, we should probably wrap up. Yep. Yeah. We're being attacked by this pterodactyl oh, damn it. again. This is a bone bird. And uh, next anyway. week we'll be back with more podcasts. Yeah, yeah. so what do you guys uh, think of this game? Uh, just wrap it up. I like here. it. Looks fine. Looks like most other puzzle games. Good way to kill six hours. <laughs> Alright then. I don't know. Like, it just seems to, another journey. Very beautiful game with a minimalist story. Looks fun. I'm just not. I'm not super selling it because they didn't I feel do like- a great <laughs> job. They didn't do a great job making the character look like Adam, but they gave him. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck's that supposed to mean? That's a to solid reference. Like. Yeah, well, fair enough. <laughs> Bring back that fucking all right, then. <laughs> insult then. Well, we'll see you all next week uh, with another podcast. Have fun. Bye. Play Tekken 7. Play this game. It does look good. It looks great! There you go. <laughs> a seamless blend of world and story making with intricate puzzles. Stop talking about br- Tekken. Talk about this game. <laughs> oh, <laughs>